Hey guys, happy Monday. This week we're gonna be reading a story from the airplane book. So if you don't have your airplane book with you, you might wanna pause the video and run out and get that so that we can get started. All right, so the story that we're gonna focus on this week is called Moving Day. And it's on page 16 in your book. This is the only story we're gonna read this week. Uh, so you're going to be reading it a few times, and there's going to be some things that we're going to do with it throughout the week. Just a little different than when we're in class and we go through multiple stories a week. We're just focusing on one and just doing some things. Because really, you guys, the important thing is that you read. You just read. Even if you read something besides this, um, in addition to this or whatever, your eyes looking at words and trying to figure out what they are and reading them is so important. It's going to help you in everything. You know this already. I'm just reminding you because I know it's been really tough being at home and trying to do all of this. It's tough on parents. It's tough on you guys. Um, it's tough on everybody. So we want this to be as painless as possible. We want you to learn, but we also want you to enjoy it and, and enjoy reading. All right. So today I'm going to read the story to you. I apologize. My nose is itching so bad. <laughs> Um, I'm going to read the story to you, and you can listen to me while I'm reading it, but I also want you to take that finger like we do in class and track each word because your eyeballs need to look at those words, and when you come across a word you don't know, I'm saying it for you, so you'll have that, that for help, okay? And then throughout the week, you can re-watch the video. You can go back and read the book yourself, which is also very important. Read it to a grown-up. Read it to your siblings. Read it to your stuffed animals. Read it out loud. Read it quiet. Whatever. Just get your eyeballs on those words again, okay? And think about how it goes. This is a really fun story. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started because sometimes, as you all know, I talk too much. All right, page 17. This shell is snug. This shell is tight. I will find a shell that's just right. This shell is too big. This shell is too small. Page 21. Too big, too small. These shells will not do at all. This shell is too long. This shell is too wide. Page 24. Too long, too wide, too big, too small. These shells will not do at all. This shell is too heavy. This shell is too light. Too heavy, too light, too long, too wide, too big, too small. These shells will not do at all. Look down at the page um, 29. Look at the crab's face. You know, we talk about characters and what they go through in stories and how sometimes how they're feeling. And we can tell a lot with from our illustrations about a character. And looking at our crab, look at his face, look at his eyes, look at his mouth. How can you tell maybe what the crab is feeling. Does he look sad? Does he look happy? Does he look frustrated? Does he look mad? What is he feeling? You can kind of tell because his mouth is turned down. We, we know what that means, right? He's not very happy at this point. So we're going to move on to page 30. This shell is too rough. This shell is too smooth. Too rough too smooth, too heavy, too light, too long, too wide, too big, too small. These shells will not do at all. This shell is too fancy. This shell is too plain. I love pages 36 and 37 because each of these words each of these sentences has a description word, like fancy or plain or long or wide, and then it has the picture right there to show you. So I think it's, it's kind of neat. On page 36, 
Make sure you're still tracking, guys. Too fancy, too plain, too rough, too smooth, too heavy, too light, too long, too wide, too big, too small. These shells will not do at all. On page 38, it says, this shell is too, wait. It's not too snug. It's not too tight. This shell is the one that's just right. I added a just there by accident. I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna reread that because sometimes we make mistakes, even grownups when we're reading. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reread that because I inserted a word that wasn't there. And we all do that sometimes, so I'm gonna fix it. All right, page 40, the last sentence, it says, this shell is the one that's right. This shell has more room inside, room to grow, room to hide. Look down on page 41, look at the crab's face. What can we tell about what's changed in his feelings? Remember that, his uh, mouth that was down like this? Look at it now. Whoop. I know why this shell is fine. It's like the other shell of mine. Look at the little crab inside the shell. How's he feeling? He's feeling happy. He feels content. He probably feels safe. So in this story, a couple of things I want you to think about and discuss with your grownups. As bad as I want to just sit here and give answers, I can't discuss back and forth. So I really want to hear what you have to say. This story has a theme to it. Well, let me back up. First, we're going to talk about the main idea or the main thing that's going on. What is this story about? What is, what is, if you had to tell someone all about this story in maybe two sentences, what is this story about? About a little crab who's looking for a home and not having good luck. Then he finds a home. So what's, what's the big, what's the big um, thing about him finding that home? His home was just like the one he already had. He was searching for something and he really didn't know it at the time. He really wanted what he already had. He just needed it a little bit. He needed it fixed up a little bit. Look at the page 17 when he first, the first picture that we saw of the crab with his little shell. His shell's a little beat up, kind of like when we have our house. And maybe, you know, something bumps the wall and it gets a little messed up. We just put some paint on it. It's the same house. We just fix it up a little. He found in the end that his home was just like the one he had. He didn't need anything different. He just wanted it fixed up a little. There's a theme there. And we're going to talk about theme more in the end, but I want you to think about what lesson did he learn from that? What kind of um, lesson did he learn from searching and searching for something? And then in the end, he, he already knew what he wanted and um, he learned to be content. Hint, hint. So we're gonna talk more about that later, but really I want you to just focus on the main idea and some details and I'm going to give you a graphic organizer to help you sort of organize your thoughts on that. If you want to fill that gra graphic organizer out, if you want to print it and um, take a picture of it and send, send it to me after you've filled it in. If you want to do it, I'll send it in slide form. If you want to type it in or guys for this week, if you want to just talk about it with your grownups and um, just do your best at, rereading the story that's fine too I don't want this to start out um, with a lot of you know anxiety about all of this I really just want you to read and um, I will be here during 
my office hours, moms, dads, grownups, y'all have my uh, phone number even. If you need me, call me. I'll be glad to set up a little meeting. One thing I will say is that I've got four different grade levels I teach. So trying to coordinate at one given time is very difficult. But if you let me know that you need some help, I'll be glad to work with you guys. Um, because there's some things, there's so many things I wish we could talk about face to face, but we're going to do the best we can. Listen, I love you guys. I want you to have a great week and reach out to me. If you need anything, check your dojo. I'll have some additional stuff just to help you, um, help you throughout the week and give you some things to work on with this story. I hope you have a great week guys. I'll see you later. Bye.